I actually had a few questions for you. You mentioned, you know, you're, you're okay with sharing your, your use, if it's okay talking about a little bit around that. With, with certain areas, uh, I would say, uh, but I'm an open book as far as that goes. Absolutely. Sure. For sure. Well, let's start off with the topicals, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, know yeah. More about topicals. I would like to know more about how you use topicals. Is it, more as a, is it more of an everyday thing? Is it more of a like right before I go to sleep, like a routine or ritual type of thing? Or I, when you feel aches? Okay, honest, honest truth here. I wish it was every day, <laughs> but I, I, can, I guess I'm allowed to swear it's my own podcast. I can't afford that shit every day. <laughs> so, so um, yes, I think that because I'm an old dude who still uses his body most days, and and that changes as as any young person who has the luxury of growing older finds that the body doesn't respond as well. So so I I would um, because it is still very pricey, um, I typically use it just about after every surf session or if I doing if I'm doing any kind of uh, intense physical activity. And in a perfect world, I would use it before I did any activity, uh, because I think that that not only can enhance um, uh, performance because the muscles don't get as sore, uh, um, I think it also may have some injury preventative aspects to it. Gotcha. Um, I first learned about way before I went to medical school. I, first, I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and a buddy of mine uh, from Las Vegas, uh, New Mexico, not Nevada, um, his, he is what the local people call a curandero. Uh, curandero comes from the root word of cure, uh, local healer. And his family had a 400-year history of passing down from grandmother to son he learned a lot of his healing techniques from his, his lineage. Yeah. He was the first guy, and this would have been in, uh, boy, when was I in New Mexico? 96, 97 ish long time ago um, was telling me how um, a lot of the, a, a lot of the local people would be using a tincture of multiple herbs one of which included cannabis for sore muscles, but it was in an alcohol tincture. And so it wasn't a lotion or anything, but that they would apply it to the area. And that stuck with me for a long, long time um, because I went through a, a process and it wasn't until, oh, about 15 or so years ago that I really started to key into cannabis as a medicine. And then I remembered that story, got myself interested in, in, in Washington State early before, uh, uh, you know, adult recreational legalization. We had a medical legalization. And the, um, the model was a co-op model so that you could band together with other people and one person might be a good grower, another person might be good at making, uh, you know, brownies, which is what we did at the time, etc. And uh, um, uh, so I, I started talking at little co-ops around and giving them my opinion. Nice. Um, and that's when I discovered topicals. And I think somebody gave me a, I was a patient, so I could participate legally, uh, but, but uh, somebody gave me some topicals early on, uh, which really, really, really helped uh, because uh, um, that's what I use cannabis medically for, for the most, is just when I get banged up and uh, I'm sore. And it, it really makes a, a quick difference for as far as that goes. I'm glad you mentioned that. I actually have a question. And this is, I'm gonna illustrate this question for you, okay? So, and, and, and hopefully you can speak to this because I think we, I think especially young adults, this makes sense. So if I put lotion on my hands, it stays on the surface of my hands. If I put CBD on my hands, it extracts, it pulls down into the muscles and the bones. What is that that's pulling down? What is that? There's a, there, there's a, a, a technical term called osmosis. Uh, and diffusion. You can Google those. But basically, uh, things will move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. And you're absolutely right. The skin is a barrier. So some things will cross through the skin 
and some things don't. Sure. Um, uh, and um, so when we've been in the water a long time, our, our, the outside of our skin absorbs water, but the inside doesn't. So we get those little wrinkles in our skin. Uh, what crosses the skin barrier tends to be things that are, can be dissolved in lipids, also known as fats or alcohol. Uh, but, uh, uh, but water tends to not cross the skin. So lotions will have a water component to them. They'll have a, a fat or a lipid component to them. And CBD crosses the skin actually very easily. THC, not so much. So CBD is very easy to get across the skin. And we know from animal studies that not only does it get across the skin, but it gets all the way into underlying muscle tissue, at least in animal studies. And um, we have the beginning of our pain reception starts out in the body. Those signals then go to the brain where it processes the pain response. Mm -hmm. So with a topical cannabis product, um, I use the analogy of a Bluetooth speaker that you run on your phone or your iPad. Where can you adjust that volume? Well, if my phone's on the other side of the room and the speaker's over here, I could just touch the buttons on the speaker, or if the speaker's on the other side of the room and my phone's over here, I can adjust mm -hmm. the volume on my phone. Makes sense. So topicals are like adjusting the phone or adjusting the volume at the speaker. When we put them on locally, part of what's happening are anti-inflammatory aspects, but also part of what's happening is that it is changing the volume signal as it travels up to the brain. So it's actually working on multiple levels so that if somebody is getting relief medically from cannabis for pain from, I don't like gummies because kids can eat them, but from something that they eat orally, tincture or whatever, um, they might likely also be able to get some additional relief from a topical. What's also cool about topicals is even uh, if you use a topical that has THC in it, that will not get you a head high. And there's a biologic reason for that. If you're interested, I can go in it. But, but as I said, THC crosses about one-tenth as easily as CBD. But what we do know from studies, at least in animals, is that it, it appears that a combination and a topical of THC plus CBD works better than either alone. Um, and also topicals are dose dependent. So when you are, if you're purchasing a topical, you want to look at the total milligram amount that is in it. Uh, because it's not about the size of the lotion. It's about the amount of cannabinoids that are in it. So you might actually get a value from buying a smaller bottle at a greater price than a bigger bottle at a, at a lower price. It depends on how concentrated it is. Just like, um, I don't like to use an alcohol example, but it's the only one. Just like some beer is 3.2% alcohol, some beer is 7% alcohol, they have a different concentration. Got you. And that's, that's very well said. 